Hey everybody, Greg here, and this is a short video about some of the unusual emails, spam emails that you might receive. I get a lot of questions about emails like these. So one category would be emails that come to you from a friend or family member or someone from work and it's obviously spam. They're like, hey, check this out, and there's some weird link, so you don't click on it, but you wonder, how would that be? You know, and you check the email address, and it's, in many cases, not a legitimate email, or it's not their email address. It's only the sender name that is somebody you know. Obviously, the reason that a spammer would want to do that is so that you'd be, you're, let your guard down. You know, here's a name you know, you're more likely to click on a link if it's coming from someone you know. Um, but the fact that the email address is different is an indication that they're sending emails from some other account and pretending to be someone you know. How do they get that information? Well, you know, most likely it is uh, the result of any one of these, for example, Yahoo had uh, some accounts breached. There were 1.5 billion accounts that were hacked. Um, and I've, you know, had people come to me who've had their accounts hacked. And what happens is all the email messages are deleted, presumably after they're siphoned out of the account. And all of the contacts in the contacts list are gone. So what's happening is these hackers are building and building and building up these databases of relationships between even if your account didn't get hacked, you know that any emails you've sent to somebody whose account has been hacked, well then the, the hacker would know, oh, this person knows this person. And they would see also any messages that were sent out to a dozen people and your name was on the list, they'll assume these people know each other. So those relationships are built up and even um, I would guess family connections, so these hacker databases now would contain information about who are your family members, who are your friends, who are your work colleagues. Um, and so you will see emails coming from these people you know. And um, so that's, that's one instance of something that's odd. Another message that you might get in your inbox is a message from yourself to yourself. So again, the reason the hacker would use that is uh, you obviously would remember if you've sent yourself a message, but it, it, it's more likely to get into your inbox if your spam blocking software or service is going to block names that you don't know, but certainly not going to block names that you do know or yourself, like if you've sent yourself a carbon copy of a message. Um, and, but you might wonder, wait a minute, is this person, have they hacked into my account? Is that how they're able to send me a message from myself? And again, if you check the return to email, uh, it could very likely not be your real email. It's just that it has your name there. Um, so the question that people have then is, well, wait a minute, how does that work? And sometimes you'll get a message from your email account. It looks like it's from your email account. And you have to really dig into um, what's called the header information. There's some hidden details and data relating to the path that that email took to get to you um, to determine did it really come from your account or not. You know, if, you, if your account was hacked, then you'll see in your outbox a bunch of spam that was sent out or in your sent items sent out to people in your contacts list. Uh, so what I want to show you on the screen here, though, is a kind of message that you'll get back that is a little confusing or a little, um, you know, going to cause you to wonder, well, how did this happen? Okay, so, uh, and, and there are two forms that this might take. One message that might come in could be a bounced message, or it'll say, we're sorry, uh, the person you sent this to couldn't be reached, and it's coming back. And you think, well, wait a minute, I didn't send a message out. So why am I getting this message back to my account that says the message was bounced? Well, it's because there's a spammer out there using your return address to send out spam messages to a bunch of random people. Why would they do that? Well, because your email has not been blacklisted yet. Um, give it some time, you know, if they're using it you may end up getting on some blacklist lists. Anyway, um, so there's that. You'll get 
messages in your inbox that say you sent out an email and it wasn't delivered because and these spammers are using old lists so some mailing list from five or ten years ago they're just sending it to a million people most of them go through but some go to an account that no longer exists or that's been um, abandoned and so the, the mailbox is full and you'll get a bounced message back that says you tried to send a message to somebody there's a bounced message because the mailbox is full well anyway Let's take a look at what I have on the screen here. This is an example. It says, uh, thank you for your message to, you know, this business and uh, dear, and then it, it maybe isn't even your name, right? They probably use some other name, uh, but dear name, your message, um, you know, to us has been received. So typical confirmation message that you would get if you've ever sent a company an email or filled out an online form it'll say oh we've got your message um, so in this case if we look at just the the basic information it looks like it's legitimately from uh, this stores online pro or whatever and that if you reply it's going to go to uh, ridgefieldfunding.com which is kind of interesting um, why you know why would the domain for the who it's from be different than the domain for who it's going to get replied to but anyway and then the two i have blanked out for privacy for the person that uh, sent this to me so this person though in the two and it is the person that contacted me and said hey why would i be getting an email that says thanks for your message i didn't send these people any message and did somebody have access to my account or how would that have gotten in there so if, it, if it's an online form either a prankster who's trying to mess with you or just some random person, uh, if it's an online forum, they could just put your name in, they could put your email address in and then type whatever they want and press send and now the company's gonna reply to you because that's the information that was put in on the online forum. You've seen a lot of those um, I'm not a robot buttons and you click and then it says uh, click on stoplights or cars or storefronts or bridges or whatever and you have to click and prove you're not a robot. Well, that's part of the reason why they don't want a bunch of fake uh, you know information put into their online forms so let's um, dig a little deeper into this so the, the question comes up if it was an online form you can kind of understand okay pretty much anything can be put in an online form but what about an email being sent could there have been an email sent from my address to this company um, without me knowing it and now I'm getting a reply back from the company to my address as if this is an exchange between me and this company I've never heard from so that's that's really getting to be an interesting question so I'm going to close out of this window and what I want to take you to is this is just a Google search of Outlook account setup reply to sender name if you go into the settings for uh, Thunderbird or Outlook or Apple Mail, any of these mail programs, you will see, and, and I haven't gone through these in detail, but let's just click on one. You go to an, into advanced settings. Uh, let's see, I mean, there's, there's a place in here where you can provide a return to email address and a sender name that's whatever you want it to be. You could put, um, you know, Sonny and Cher, whatever. I mean, you can fill in whatever name and whatever email address you want in these email clients. So it's different than just using Gmail, uh, where, you know, you go into Gmail or any of these online email services. They already have your name and everything set up and the return to address. And they don't let you really tweak that stuff because they figure, well, why would you change the return address, right? But with these mail clients, you can do that. So that's the point I want to make is that somebody can go in, they can set up a mail client to have your name as the sender and your email address as the reply to. So whoever's receiving it is just going to think you've written and that's how this gets started okay so that's that's what's going on um, that's the technical side of how it's done and then you might wonder well why um, and maybe a spammer just wants to be random with 
the addresses they use and the mail servers they use, and if there's enough randomness there, it's hard to shut them down. Um, and that would be my best guess as to why that's happening. So uh, step one, this spammer person buys a list of a million names of people who are interested in voting or whatever. And then step two, they set up some mail client. And I don't know, but there's probably some software out there that's randomization software that spammers can use that, you know, you, you feed into it some database of known working email addresses and known sender names. Um, and then you feed into it the list of, you know, you're going to be sending from these people to these people uh, and lots of randomness in there. And then those messages may not get flagged as spam. That's the spammer's dream, you know. So um, that's the why. That's the why it's getting done. And um, your name and email address can be picked up from online forums, from any of these 1.5 billion accounts that got hacked or whatever. There are plenty of places to determine that. And if you know, email just kind of flies around on the internet in the clear. It's not typically not encrypted unless you've gone to some uh, lengths to encrypt your email. So, um, you know, what you're writing, who you're writing to, if somebody were to hack into a mail server and kind of monitor email traffic, they could pick up a lot of um, to and from uh, information. And um, anyway, that's that's why that is. And so people are quick to assume that their account was hacked into and then they changed their password, which, you know, it's good to keep your password changed. But um, sometimes people panic a little too much when, you know, some research, as I mentioned, you know, looking at the actual address of where it came from can help determine uh, whether or not it was actually in a, a hacked account. Um, so, you know, I guess the best practice is to be alert, be careful about clicking on anything. There could certainly be uh, use of these things that I'm talking about um, to entice you or gain your trust and get you into clicking on some link. So just be very alert about the different kinds of um, frauds and scams that are out there. That's, that's what I would say. Um, and. I guess that's about it. So if you have any questions or comments or requests for other topics for videos, feel free to mention those down below if you're on YouTube or if this video is on my website, you can just contact me through the website. And I appreciate all the comments and likes and subscriptions uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. So, or at least you seeing me in the next video. And I'll just imagine that I'm seeing you through the camera. Okay, so anyway, thanks again and have a great day.